Hey, good morning and welcome to the Art of a Life Well Lived. I am Christine Regan Lake and it's good to be back here again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, I would love for you to do that. If you find my uh, videos to be valuable and something you'd like to hear more of, you can hit the bell button to be notified when I update new content, which I try to do several times a week. Um, and if you like the videos, if you want to hit uh, like or share, that would be awesome. That helps me tweak my algorithm so that I can get my message out to those who want and need to hear it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Okay. So let's get started. So today I want to talk to you about detoxing your physical body after a narcissistic or toxic relationship. So the reason that this is so important is because what we don't even realize when you're in a toxic situation, when you've been in a narcissistic relationship or a narcissistic marriage, a narcissistic office environment with a toxic boss, things like that, when you are living kind of in a perpetual state of constantly worrying about this person who is kind of like this volcano who could erupt at any point, what ends up happening is your fight or flight, uh, fight, flight, fawn, and freeze uh, reaction, the sympathetic nervous system, can get turned on and it can get turned on so that it never turns off. So that basically 24 7, you're producing adrenaline and cortisol. And I lived through this, so I know exactly what I'm talking about and how detrimental the physical effects are on your physical health. I actually went to a a lymphatic massage specialist in 2015 after I had been training for Mount Rainier. We were going to summit Mount Rainier. And, you know, I was training five days a week with anywhere from 25, 35, 50 pounds on my back for three hours at a shot five days a week. And I had no muscle tone. And I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> How is this even possible? I can't even train any harder. And she's like, all I can tell you is, she said, your body is retaining a massive amount of lymphatic fluid. What we later discovered was that I had toxic levels of cortisol and adrenaline that was completely overburdening both my liver and my lymphatic system. Like when you would actually press on my thigh, it was almost like a water balloon. Now, how can someone have a thigh like that who's, you know, training to, you know, summit Mount Rainier? It's just, it doesn't make sense. But I later discovered and under, came to understand the power of cortisol and what that does to the body and all of the domino effects that it had. I had toxic levels in my pituitary gland, which was screwing up my hormone production, which was impacting my weight. So anyway, let's go through some of the common symptoms that you will experience after you've been in a narcissistic or toxic relationship that impacts the body. Well, the first thing is that you may find that you have rapid weight gain. You get into this connection and next thing you know, you're just starting to like swell up like a balloon. Your face, especially your chest and your abdomen, the cortisol, all of a sudden that's going to impact your, and no matter what you do, you're, you know, if you may try to drop the weight, it'll come back on, drop the weight, it'll come back on. It's that the cortisol screws up your weight, your hormones. It impacts it on so many levels. It's completely toxic and it's not good for you. What also happens is that when your um, sympathetic nervous system is turned on 24 seven, it turn, if that's on, then that means your rest and digest, which is all about your digestion and your ability, your ability, you know, to move things, move things through your colon is turned off. So it completely screws up your digestion as well. You may find that if you have excess cortisol levels that you, your face may be like flush red. It can impact high blood pressure, osteoporosis. You can bruise easily. You know, you always hear about people who tend to bruise easily. They even barely touch something and next thing you know, they got a bruise on their leg or their arm or whatever, um, or stretch marks, things like that. You'll also notice muscle weakness. When you have too much cortisol, your muscles are not going to have the strength that they typically do. With too much cortisol, it's going to definitely affect your emotional state. So you'll have anxiety, depression, and irritability. And then you'll also um, find that you have an increase in your uh, desire for, uh, for water. You're very thirsty all the time, and you frequently urinate, right? So you're constantly going to the bathroom. Cortisol and adrenaline, they're perfect for short instances where you need them when you're truly 
in danger, but when you are not in danger and it's just your perpetual state of existence that your body's pumping out cortisol and adrenaline 24 seven, it's deeply, deeply unhealthy for you. So what can you do specifically? So you've got these symptoms. It's either the weight gain in your face, your chest or your belly. You've got a flushed round face, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, skin changes, muscle weakness, anxiety, depression, or irritability, and increased thirst and uh, constant urination. Those are the symptoms. Now, what can you do to stop it or correct it? So you can start by doing abdominal breathing. Start to, when you learn how to breathe deeply into the abdomen and you calm the body, you can shut off, you can learn to shut off the sympathetic nervous system, which will stop then that constant production of the adrenaline and the cortisol. So you can do abdominal breathing exercises. And there's so many out there that you can embrace where you count, you know, hold, you know, inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of eight, release for a count of seven, whatever. There's a million different ways, whatever resonates for you, but find a breathing technique that will help you to slow down your breathing. They also found that just in general, the faster you breathe, the shorter your life. So we want to embrace a slower rhythm to our breathing because that is going to create a terrain in our body that will sustain long life. So that's that's just helpful beyond just the cortisol. So what else can you do? Well, you can meditate. Part of the abdominal breathing is you can do meditation, meditation to calm the mind. And meditation can be not just sitting in, you know, an Indian style position, chanting prayers and, you know, uh, things like that. Meditation can also be, you know, reading or painting or gardening or whatever it is for you, but just embracing something that allows you to be completely present where you're not time traveling to the past or the future. So those are two things that you can do that will help to reverse the high cortisol in your body. The next time, the next thing you want to do is specifically get out in nature. So if you were gardening, that's great. But you know, if you, if your meditation was, you know, sitting in a meditation class or yoga, then maybe go out and get a hike in nature. Nature is completely calming and soothing to the nervous system. And it, it's, it's, it's incredibly powerful for soothing the body And the sounds and the smells and everything like that will absolutely help you to calm your body, calm your nervous system, and to shut off your the excess, shut off your sympathetic nervous system that is causing the excess cortisol. You want to make sure that you're eating healthy whole foods. You know, a lot of processed junk food isn't going to help um, because that's going to give your body the fuel, the proper fuel that it needs to heal and rejuvenate your body and to detox and cleanse. You also want to stay connected with family and friends. You know, when we're isolated, when we're feeling lonely, that only impacts the level of sadness, depression, or whatever, and all of these things can spiral down. The next thing that I would do is, and I've been doing deep tissue cellular cleansing for 15 years, Deep tissue cellular cleansing is very powerful. It's a combination, and I'll put a link in the description box to the box to the program that I use. I've used this program for 15 years, and I do them in different ways. Some days I'll do a, a tight nine day. Some days I do it for a full 30 days. It just depends on what my goals are in that moment. But essentially, in that deep tissue cellular cleanse, what you're going to want to do is you're going to bombard the body with deep, mineral-rich, enzymatically live foods whole foods that will allow you to have give your body the fuel it needs to cleanse and detox the body. You're also going to do cleanse days. Now, it depends on your level of commitment on how you want to do this. You could do one cleanse day a week for um, every week for the four weeks, or you could do two cleanse days a week for the first two weeks. It's however you want to do it. But The power of cleansing and doing a fast where you're not having any food and you're just drinking this botanical beverage that's all got all the nutrients and adaptogens and and vitamins and minerals and nutrients to d- deeply clean the cells at the at the cellular level it's going to enable your body to really clean clean sleep clean sleep sweep <laughs> i can't speak clean sweep like go through and really 
you know, clean your body out from all the garbage and the gunk. It, and on day two of fasting, you're going to deeply impact the liver, which is super important. The liver has over a thousand different functions it does for the body. So if your liver is overburdened, you know, you definitely want to get to that second day of, of um, fasting and cleansing because that's when it's really going to go to work on the liver. And just so you know, the three um, things that are worst, the worst for the liver are sugar, pharmaceutical, any kind of synthetic pharmaceutical drug, whether it's over the counter or prescription and alcohol. And anytime you have more than two glasses of alcohol at any given time, you are overburdening your liver. So you truly want to make sure if you know that you have had any of those three in any level of quantity, then you're definitely going to want to make sure that you do the cleansing fast where you go at least two days instead of just the single one, because day two is really when it's going to hit the liver, you know, well for you and really clean the liver for you. So a deep tissue cellular cleanse, that's going to help cleanse the body, pull all the garbage out. And you want to do this, you know, consistently. Uh, you also want to create um, a really good habit for your sleep. Ideally, you want to be in bed by 10 o'clock because the two hours before midnight are incredibly valuable for your body. And I believe it's between 10 and 2 is when it's working on the liver. So you just want to take specific care on nourishing your body and cleansing your body after you have left a toxic relationship because, to be honest, to be you need to understand that like, when you've been an emotionally traumatic experience, the impact it has on your physical body is profound. So you want to do whatever it takes to cl clean that body out and give yourself a clean slate. You might want to do a series of cleanses. I would also recommend um, doing a uh, heavy metal detox program, some kind of chelation program. There's a there's a product called Tox Detox that is a combination of glutathione and EDTA that will profoundly pull the heavy metals out of your system, and you'll 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 start that program. And that you you basically depending upon your age, you probably want to do about four boxes by the time you're 40, and then 10 an extra box for every age over 40. So if you're 50, then you know if you're 60, you're going to be doing like uh, five boxes. I think it is. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I didn't really want to talk about the tox detox, but it just came up. So anyway, I just really believe that you have to detox your body from all of this chemical fear, chemical anxiety, chemical trauma, which is the adrenaline and cortisol. It's toxic in your body. It could be making you fat. It could be making you depressed. And the quicker you get it out of your body, the better. So embrace all of those things. Again, breathing exercises, abdominal breathing, um, meditation, getting out in nature, make sure you're eating healthy, live, enzymatically, mineral rich foods, cleanse and detox the body, embrace fasting, intermittent fasting, and um, to focus on getting a good night's sleep. Your body is a temple and it more than likely has been under a bombardment if you've been in a long-term relationship with someone who is toxic. And so now it's time for you to care for and love your physical body so that it can support you in living a long, vibrant, and healthy life. So if you have any questions about the cleanse, the detox, or anything that I talked about, just let me know, put it in the comments. Like I said, I've been doing these, the cleansing detox for that program for over 15 years. I try to do it several times a year just to clean my body out, just because there's so much gunk and garbage in the food when you go out to dinner and stuff like that. Um, and it's in, it's in everything. It's in the air, it's in the water, it's in the clothes. There's just toxins everywhere. But when you've had, um, you know, a toxic relationship, more than likely you have excess levels of adrenaline and cortisol in your body that are negatively impacting you. And we just want to get that out. <laughs> All right. So have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.